Loma Outlast Campbell, who's next for the Matrix, and who can solve the Matrix. Please like and subscribe. Help us hit 10,000 subscribers. Share on all forms of social media. Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of Sunday Morning Champion. Vasily Lomachenko takes a hard-fought, hard-earned, unanimous decision victory over Luke Campbell. Uh, we had it 115-112 for Lomachenko. Um, first off, the scorecards of the three judges were ridiculous. Um, the cards of Judge Omar Minton and Benoit Roussel, who both had it 119-108, were absolutely criminal. One freaking round for for Luke Campbell, huh? I, I I guess no, I guess there was no nonsense hometown decision for Cool Hand Luke, right? The two judges, the, those two judges, I had a one nineteen one hundred eight. Um, for 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 Lomachenko. Um, they need to be called into the commission's office. They need to be reviewed. And they need to be suspended until they can explain that scorecard. And if they can't, they need not work again. Okay, that's how bad those cards are. Those aren't we disagree on a couple rounds. Uh, the first round and the sixth round weren't close. Campbell won those clearly. Uh, I hadn't looked at their cards to see what round they scored for who, but they got one of those clearly wrong. I mean, that, that, these scorecards are, are, are inexcusable. Okay, let's move on from that. Um, the fight was really good. Um, it's going to leave a, a lot of options open for Lomachenko. Uh, I want to get into a few of these options. Option one, obviously, Javante Tank Davis. This could happen relatively soon. I know that seems unlikely, but uh, I'll explain. Um, Tank has vacated his WBA 130-pound strap um, and is going up to 135 to fight Yoriokis Gamboa um, in a final eliminator for the WBA lightweight belt, which... If Tank wins, and he certainly could, um, and he most likely will, which would leave us with Tank as the number one contender for Loma's WBA strap. Um, Tank versus Loma, you know, Tank would be the mandatory. Um, would Mayweather and those guys put the pressure on to make the fight? You have to think um, that this is a calculated move, right? Because they've walked away from a lot of money from the Tevin Farmer fight. There's other fights at 130 they could make. Um, it, it, Santa Cruz and Gary Russell talked about moving up. That would be easy to make as they're all on the PBC side of things. Um, so there, there has to be a lucrative reason to move up to 135. Um, that, that you would think that this is this fight. That's this fight, right? This is the fight everyone seems to want. It's a great fight. But let's be real. Tank really hasn't beaten anyone in a long time that would prepare him for Loma. He hasn't even fought anyone at a world-class or an elite level. Uh, he has a great win over Pedraza. Great win. Okay, and, and in retrospect, that's even better. Um, that was going on three years ago. The next time Tank steps in the ring, that fight would have likely been three years ago. Okay, so it's been three years, basically, since he beat Pedraza. And, and he has beaten nobody, nobody, since. You know, I, I think Tank is excellent. However, I, I, I don't uh, think he is the one that solves the Matrix. I really don't. Um, he can make it fun, and he can have some moments, but in order to beat Loma, for my calculations, you need to do two things, okay, really well. First, you need to have a great jab. You need to be able to jab with Loma. And you have to be able to make him, make him retreat. You have to make him go backwards. Tank could, do, could be able to do the latter. He can't do the former. Uh, from from the outside, not necessarily have to out jab him, but you have to be able to jab with him, right? You can't let him have his way with you, um, like he did with Rigo, right? The reason why Rigo didn't have any success was because he, he, he didn't have the size advantage. He couldn't jab with him, uh, or he didn't have a reach advantage. I you know might have been slight, but um, basically they, they were the same. Their jab was the same length, and and, and it wasn't good enough, right? Um, and Loma was able to get inside, tie him up, get in and out. Tank would have the same problem. Now, Tank is physically strong, massively strong, uh, lightning quick, and amazingly powerful, right? So he can have moments. He can get on the inside and do his damage. But Loma's so good defensively, he's so agile, that those are going to be flashing moments. 
A tank would need to come up with lightning in a bottle and put them out with one shot. Or two shots. You know, a quick two-piece that puts them out, out. Um, because he's just not good enough to consistently beat him from the outside. He's not going to land his power shots from the outside. You don't really land with anything other than a jab from the outside. You need to set everything up off the jab. Uh, you saw Pedraza had some success with that. Luke Campbell had some success going to the body coming off the jab. Um... Who was it? Uh, I, I can't think. Um, but all, all, of, all of the Linares, I'm sorry, Linares scored the knockdown, one round, with speed, that keeping him in the jab and set, setting up power shots, and he dropped them with the right hand. So everything has to come off the jab at long range, okay? If you don't have the jab, he's going to get inside. If he gets inside, that footwork, the, that, those, that agility, it, it's going to be too much. Um, he's extremely difficult to score on from the out, outside, so you, you, that long jab allows you to kind of control him in a, in, a, in a way. Slow him down a bit. Keep him in front of you. Um, just bang him in the chest. You know, just keep him uncomfortable. I, I don't think Tank would be able to score with the big stuff from the outside. So Loma wins by outboxing him in the middle of the ring. And not that uh, Tank doesn't make it interesting. He doesn't win rounds. He doesn't land some big shots. He could. He could do all those things. Uh, but ultimately, Loma's that much better, um, and, and he doesn't. Tank doesn't have the size, of, the size advantage which he, which he would need. Um, so, Tank's not the one that solves the matrix. Now, I want to get into this Devin Haney thing. Devin Haney tweeted, "He can beat Loma." Point blank. Period. That, that's what Devin Haney tweeted. Well, Devin Haney's beaten Antonio Moran and Mason Menard, so obviously he can beat Loma. Come on, Dev. That you're a really good fighter with a bright, bright future. But like Eddie Hearn says, he's 20 years old. He's 20. Okay. You know, Eddie's excited that he's 20, but let's, let's you know, take the good with the good and the bad with the bad. He's 20. No reasonable person thinks he can beat Loma, right? No reasonable person thinks at this point in 2019, Devin Haney can beat Lomachenko. He's not ready for that. And he's an excellent young fighter at this point. But... Look, right now, he doesn't beat uh, T.F. Evil Lopez or Hector, Hector. Right now, in 2019, Devin Haney doesn't beat T.F. Evil Lopez or Hector Tanahara, in all seriousness. So he's not even a top two prospect at 135. Like, he's not beating Loma at all. He's not anywhere near ready for that. Look, Tanahara and T.F. Evil don't have world beaters. They, they don't have world-class resumes, but they have both have better resumes than Devin Haney. Look. And I want to be real about this, because Devin Haney versus uh, Lomachenko, this fight could happen sooner rather than later, and I'll explain that. Eddie Hearn has a surprise. He said he has a pound-for-pound -pound signing in the wings. Um, he has said incredible things about Loma and how he wants to promote Loma. Combine that with saying, I have a pound-for-pound -pound star in my wings that I'm about to announce. I think if if it's him, if it's Loma, which I, I think it is, that, that's just a hunch. You know, again, it's a surprise. Eddie, Eddie Hearn wants to surprise us all with who his, his big signing is. I think it's either Loma or Mikey. And I don't think it's Mikey. I think it's Loma. Um, uh, <laughs> if it is Loma, he could make the Haney fight versus Loma. He's, Eddie's not afraid to do that. Right? And I don't think it's the end of the world. You know, we saw Canelo lose to Floyd Mayweather really bad when he was really young. And he came back just fine. Um, so, if Eddie makes it, Loma will destroy him. Will destroy Haney. But Haney should be fine. He's really young. He's a super talented prospect. He's a big, strong, lightweight. And he'll be back. You know, he'll probably get a title at some point at 35 and 40. Um, but right now, he doesn't match up well with Loma. He's not ready. He's not anywhere near ready for that. Right? Like, if I said to you... Hector Tanahara versus Lomachenko. Who do you pick and why? Everyone would pick Loma. Of course you'd pick Loma. And Tanahara is better than Haney. So, you know, there's that. Then there's uh, Loma versus Kome or Tiafima Lopez, right? The Kome Lopez winner. This one's interesting. If Kome wins, which he could, I know everyone's in love with Tiafima. Again, Tiafima hasn't beat anyone top, top notch yet. But if Kome wins, he has the size and style and the jab to give Loma trouble. He could confuse him, he could frustrate him. But Kome is so defensively flawed, Loma would eventually figure him out. He'd eventually find it, 
and he would get inside and, and, and he would go to work on him and make him pay. I, I think after struggling at moments, Loma figures out Kombe and, and he stops him in the later rounds. Tiafimo is incredibly interesting. Tiafimo Lopez has all the tools, the right style to beat Loma. The, the, size, the size advantage, the speed, the skills, the jab. He's got all of it, but is, is he ready? Is Tiafimo Lopez ready? He has nothing on his resume to suggest he can be even competitive with Loma. But he does have all the, he has all the tangibles. He has the speed, the power, the size, the jab, the reach, the, the movement. I mean, he's got it all offensively. And he's highly athletic. This is the one that makes me scratch my head. I would pick Loma based on the experience. But this one, it, uh, I don't know that TV was going to beat Kome. That's going to be a dog fight. If TV wins, I'd be very impressed. I, I, I guess right now I'm leaning towards TV, but I may sway on that fight as we get, get closer. Um, but that's a great fight. So if TV gets past that, I'll be very impressed. Um, I, I don't think beating Kome as offensively fluid as he is prepares you to fight Loma. But uh, that's an interesting fight. I, I would love to see that fight. And I just hope that if Tiafimo loses to Lomachenko, that it doesn't set him back. That it doesn't break his mental state, which I don't think it will. Um, the one fight I would pick against Loma is this one, Miguel Burchell. I would pick Burchell to beat Lomachenko. And I was super psyched when Bob Arum said late last year that it was, and I'm quoting here, more likely than not that Loma and Burchell would meet up in 2019. Two top-ranked fighters would meet up in 2019. It didn't happen. Now, it, it looks like Oscar Valdez is going to move up from 126 to 130 to face Miguel Pachal for that title. And, and we're going to get that fight. And I think it does well. you got two Mexican uh, stars who are fun to watch. Uh, Valdez is flawed. I think Pachal handles him relatively easily. But maybe it makes that Loma fight bigger, right? Because Pachal's not the biggest name. Valdez is a good name. Pachal uh, beats Valdez up. I think it helps build a star. Um, however, I, that's the one. I, I think Miguel Pachal is arguably the most underrated fighter in the sport. I think he's, he's got good enough boxing skills, like good enough jab. He's got dynamite chin, and, and he's so good on the inside. And he can make, like, a living hell for Lomachenko. Like, I don't want to be that guy. Like Salido did, he can bang away and make Loma miserable on the inside. This is stylistically the one fight I think is a disaster for Lomachenko. But Chell is just good enough with the jab to survive Loma's skills and strong enough and gritty enough to outwork him and outbang him on the inside and make Loma really uncomfortable and really frustrated and, and make him make no mas Chanko want to say no mas, right? Um, we still could get this fight, and I want to explain that, right? Loma says after he unifies all the belts at 35, so after he hypothetically beats the winner of Kome Tifimo Lopez, if that were to happen. He wants to go back down to 130. That's where they can make the fight with Pachal. Uh, so it would be at 130, not 135, where um, Bob Aram said would more likely than not happen. Uh, it, it would be at least a, a year from now, right? But it's a good one. It's, it's not that far off, and that's the one I think could solve the matrix. I think Burchell could beat Loma. Uh, let me know what y'all think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Um, let me know who you guys think the guy at either 30 or 35 is who could beat Loma. Right? Is it Burchell? Is it Tank? Is it someone else? Is it Tia Fimo? Is it Devin Hay? Let me know what you guys think. Let us know. Remember to smash the like button. Remember to like and subscribe. Share on all forms of social media. Help us hit 10,000 subscribers. For another episode of Sunday Morning Champion, uh, this is 3D Boxing from Texas to the world saying thank you and God bless. Enjoy 3D Boxing vlog videos? Show us some love by clicking the like button. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3dboxingvlog.com is also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.